In this video, I'm going to talk about the Novak Djokovic situation with the Australian Open and the Australia visa situation. In a few videos earlier, I told you about my troubles where my boat was 800 miles from Australia. I could not get to Australia because we could not get a visa to go into Australia. And I want to tell you why I do not think uh, Djokovic, the tennis star, the, the winner of 20 Grand Slam titles and the number one player in the world, should be allowed into Australia and why my situation was a lot different than his and why he's still getting special treatment and we definitely were not. So, number one, I'm fully vaccinated. I'm triple vaccinated. Um, almost every country in the world does require foreigners to be vaccinated upon entry and also show a negative t COVID test for tourists. So any kind of visitor, pretty much. And that's, that's is unusual to find a country that won't require those things at this point in time. Uh, so I don't think that the, the particular issue for Novak Djokovic that he's not vaccinated or he's never confirmed that he's vaccinated and he's probably also not had a confirmed case of COVID in the last six months, which may give him an exemption from the vaccination requirement. Um, he's getting special treatment right now because he's a Serbian citizen. Serbian citizens cannot go to Australia unless they get some sort of special visa waiver because he's a sports star. The same thing is, you know, the same thing is true of Americans. Americans are not allowed to go to, into Australia right now. That was my issue. I'm an Amer I have an American passport born in the USA. And, you know, I, you know, that I couldn't go there because Australia has, you know, draconian policies against foreigners. So Australians can fly to the U.S., although recently Australians were not allowed to leave their country either. Right. So, for instance, we see sailing La Vagabond, you know, they've been stranded in Australia for a long time and they just finally just recently because Australia changed its policies, were able to get back to La Vagabond to their boat in South Carolina. So uh, I totally think Australia's policies are out of whack, that they are not justified based on the science and that they're their populace is protected uh, by the fact that they've got an 80 to 90 percent vaccination rate, which is much higher than the U.S. And they're, they've had very few deaths and they, they're going to continue to have very few deaths because they're highly vaccinated. Um, the fact that Jovac Djokovic has chosen not to be vaccinated, that's stupid. That's bad for him. That's bad for his career. There's a lot of people in the United States, a lot of people in Australia, I'm sure, a lot of people around the world that have lost their jobs because they've refused to get vaccinated for stupid reasons. And, you know, if you do stupid things, you have stupid results. And so I think he's doing something pretty stupid to lose his number one ranking by not getting vaccinated. But that was something that he knew was coming and he's chosen not to get vaccinated. Now, I don't know if he's going to win the appeal because he's already getting special treatment going to Australia because he's a sports star. I can't go to Australia being vaccinated. I'm not a sports star. Um, you know, uh, had he just got a little tiny shot twice, he would have been good. And I'm sure that there may be even one shots that they accept. So, you know, that was his career decision, you know. If he wants to be number one and stay number one and want to play in the Australian Open, which he's won a ton of times, just get vaccinated. That's the obvious thing. You know, I can't I, I can't imagine a, a guy that, that travels around foreign countries all the time, like Novak Djokovic must, since he's a tennis star, that he's not getting vaccinated just for convenience sake, even if he doesn't think it's, you know, uh, what, you know, what he wants to do. So yeah, I think you've got freedom, but you've also got consequences. And the consequences are is if you're going to do things that are dangerous for yourself and dangerous for others, like not getting vaccinated, there's no downside to getting vaccinated, uh, then why not do it, 
right? And it's not a new thing for international travel to require vaccination. So for instance, I have a yellow card, right? Which says that I'm vaccinated against yellow fever because countries don't want people, tourists coming in that are gonna get sick. That's a fair, that's a fair thing for countries to do. They've been doing it for, uh, you know, dec decades upon decades. What is not fair is that Australia is restricting all tourists and has been doing that for over two years, right? And and now they're letting their their the people from their country go out, but not letting anybody else go in. I think that should change. I hope that will change. I'm fairly confident that will change in the coming months, but I don't think it's fair. I think it's unfair, especially to the other nations of the South Pacific, which it, which it, this influences their travel policies too. You know the my willingness to go to any country in the South Pacific is, is narrowed down because it's so hard to tr transit in Australia. I did transit in Australia I, the last time I flew to New Caledonia, but it was hard. It made it a lot harder that there was no visas, tourist visas in Australia. I've transited in Australia before where I, I actually entered the country. That made it a lot easier because back then, you know, tourists could enter Australia. So I also think that their lockdown policies are pretty extreme and reactionary. Uh, even though I think you should get vaccinated and COVID's a real thing and it's killed a lot of people, but, they, but the vaccines are highly effective. We've got effective treatments for COVID. And if you uh, get triple vaccinated, and you add on the treatments we have, it's less deadly than than the flu, right? You know, it's you have a 20 times more protection according to the CDC uh, if you get triple vaccinated uh, than if you're unvaccinated. And if you put the death rate 20 times below uh, what the original is, which is less than 1%, based on my estimates and uh, estimates of lots of epidemiologists and lots of studies, you're getting below the, the flu death rate. So it's a, it's a risk. COVID is a risk if you're fully vaccinated and boosted, but it's, it's, it's a risk that is comparable to other, other viruses circulating in the human population prior to 2019. So uh, I think you know, COVID's or that that uh, Jovac Djokovic is a, a spoiled brat, and he should get vaccinated. He should suffer the consequences of not being able to defend his title because he didn't get vaccinated, and that should that should show him that maybe he should get vaccinated before the U.S. Open, before the French Open. That's my advice to him. You know, I'm surprised he would be able to be eligible for those events and enter into Europe without being vaccinated as a Serbian. I don't believe Serbia is in the EU. Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me in the comments. But, you know, if if you're not a citizen, it's very hard to enter any country right now. It's, international travel is hard enough as it is right now, but it's very hard to enter any country if you're not vaccinated. And my reading of the US regulations is he's not allowed in the US without being vaccinated either. So he should get that taken care of if he doesn't want to retire. That's my advice to him. Subscribe to Slow Boat Sailing. We give you the stories of the most interesting sailors in the world in our round the world adventure.